Hi, my name is Penny and today we're going to be doing what I'm calling the ultimate Animal Crossing book tag mashup. Now despite the fact that this video is going to be Animal Crossing inspired, I am primarily just using it as an excuse to talk about books. So if you're not an Animal Crossing fan, don't worry, you can still watch this video and you might learn a little bit about Animal Crossing while we're at it. For those of you who do like Animal Crossing, well, I hope you like books as well. So I had seen that, that there was a book tag related to Animal Crossing. I wanted to do it, but when I had a look, I found that there are actually three Animal Crossing book tags going around at the moment. So I decided I would put all the questions together into one video. Not sure how that's gonna work, but we'll see. That does mean we have a lot of questions to get through, but it also means I get to talk about a lot of books, so we won't complain. But we will get going. The first group of questions is about the history of Animal Crossing. So the first prompt is Animal Crossing GameCube. So Animal Crossing originally came out on the GameCube in 2001. I didn't play it way back then, but it was pretty cute even if it's not as cute as it is now. So the prompt for this is a classic that you want to read. Hmm, I don't read a lot of classics to be honest, but one that I am interested in reading is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett, who I believe wrote The Secret Garden as well. Am I making that up? I'm not making that up. Cool. I just have a vague memory of watching a movie based on it when I was younger. I'm not even sure if that's a real memory. Maybe I'm making that up too. Maybe I'm making everything up. Anyway, that's a classic that I would like to pick up at some point. The next prompt is Animal Crossing Wild World, which came out on the Nintendo DS in 2006-ish. I didn't play this one either, but the prompt for this is your favorite second book in a series. Uh, and for that, I would definitely need to go with The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiebata. This is the second book in the Raven Cycle, which primarily is focused on the character Ronan and his particular magical abilities. It's totally spoilers to talk about what those abilities are, but you can probably guess. When I first read this it wasn't really what I was expecting, but then it really surprised me by it being something I really enjoyed. Next we have Animal Crossing City Folk and this came out around 2008 for the Wii. Uh, I have never played this one either but I have watched my brother play it. And the prompt for this is a book that is set in a large city. And for this I had to go with Elantris by Brandon Sanderson because Elantris itself is a large city. Despite the fact that it is deserted or at least its inhabitants are some kind of fantastical zombies. Then around 2012 we got Animal Crossing New Leaf for the Nintendo 3DS. This one I did play and in fact my brother managed to get my whole family into playing it. And for this the prompt is the best new release you've read recently. Uh, and for that I would go with Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiebata, which is actually a follow-on from the Raven Cycle. I don't think it's going to be a series that's for everyone, but I think people who like really strange fantasy and Maggie Stiebata's particular brand of lyrical, metaphorical writing, then those people will really love this series. And there isn't a prompt for Animal Crossing New Horizons because it hadn't come out when this tag was made. Um, personally, I haven't played this yet because even though I have the game, uh, I'm still waiting for my Switch to be delivered. It's all hung out in the lockdown, so who knows when they're going to be able to deliver it, but I will continue to wait. For that reason, I was trying to come up with a book that everybody else is reading that I'm not getting to read. Uh, and the only one I can really think of is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin because I recently read the first two books in that trilogy, but I can't get my hands on the third book in order to read that book. But I have seen several people putting it in their TBRs recently, and I think that's really unfair. You guys should just all wait for me. None of you should be playing Animal Crossing either. You should be waiting for me to be able to play it with you. Okay, the next section is all around some of the main characters on Animal Crossing. So these are not the villagers that live in your town. These are more animals within your town or on your island that have 
jobs or things that they do and they tend to be more permanent fixtures of the game whereas sometimes your villagers can come and go. The main one of these is definitely Isabel. She is your beautiful little assistant. She works very hard and you can tell she's everyone's favorite because she was included in all three of the tags that I'm combining um, and I don't think any other characters managed to get there. So for that reason we've got three prompts to answer for Isabel. Firstly we've got a book that lifted your spirits and made you feel happy. Now for me it's not normally your classic happy stuff that makes me happy. So for this I'm gonna go with I Hate Fairyland by Scotty Young. Uh, this is a graphic novel series about this girl named Gert who accidentally gets stuck in fairyland for like 30 years but her body doesn't age so she's stuck in the body of a child and she just gets really sick of it and so starts destroying everything. It's this really great contrast of super cute but super gory at the same time and the colors are so bright and vibrant that it just really cheered me up when I read it. The second prompt for Isabel is what is your most ambitious reading goal for 2020? Uh, and for me it is probably to not have reading disrupt my non-reading life. Uh, that's really hard because a lot of the time when things are hard in real life I look to my reading goals and I think wow those are easier maybe I'll just do those. So I'm trying very hard not to have my life goals suffer for my reading goals. Then our last Isabel reading prompt is a book that's been with you through thick and thin and for me uh, I struggle to think of something because I don't normally read books necessarily for comfort um, like a lot of people do but what I did think of is The Eleventh Hour by Graham Bass. So this is a weird story about this elephant who has a birthday party and invites all his friends uh, and right near the beginning there's this massive feast but when it finally comes time for them to eat it it's gone uh, and basically there are a whole bunch of codes and secrets hidden through this book to help you figure out where it went um, and this book I think is the kind of book that can just give your mind something different to think about and also because I know all the codes and the secrets now it's just really satisfying to like go through and pick out all the clues so this book because also I've had it a really long time in the back I think I've got a bunch of notes from like the first time that I read it so if you like codes and maybe if you have kids um, they might like this book the next main character that we have is Mia Tortimer. Now I'm not sure what his role is in some of the other games but in New Leaf he is the old mayor who retired and you're taking over from him uh, and he does fall asleep a lot. So the prompt for this is to name a book that you kept dozing off while you were reading it uh, and for this it's probably an unpopular opinion but it would be Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I know this is a classic fantasy and a lot of people really love it and there are some really great things about it but honestly I do not need several pages describing the trees that they are walking past. I just think for me the description was so over the top that I really just couldn't be bothered reading it. I did read it, I did get through it but phew. another main character that you meet very early on is Tom Nook. Tom Nook is a very successful businessman along with his twin sons that he gets to work at some of the local stores and very early on he lends you the money in order to start building your own house. Now some people don't appreciate that but he does let you take as long as you want to pay the money back so it's better than a lot of real life banks for sure. But anyway we have two prompts for this. So the first prompt for Tom Nook is to name an author who takes all your money. I have to be honest no authors take all my money because I have a lot of other expenses that are much higher priority than buying different authors books. I think a better way of wording this would be the second prompt which is to name an auto by author. Uh, there are a lot of authors that I would like to read all their stuff but because I'm still catching up on their backlist stuff I haven't read. I'm not quickly going out to buy their new stuff so I can really only think of one author who I am caught up on uh, and I would probably buy anything new that they put out uh, and that is Maggie Stiebarter just because I personally really like her writing style and the really strange way that her mind works but that said uh, last year I wasn't working so I didn't buy her new books. I got them out of the library maybe some point I'll be able to afford to buy them. 
some of the other business people in Animal Crossing are the Able sisters who are three adorable hedgehogs, Mabel, Sable and Labelle around the clothing store and the accessories store. So we've got two prompts for them as well. The first one is to name a book with a beautiful cover design uh, and the most beautiful book in my opinion is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. This beautiful version with Mr. Kindly on the front but also like it's so intricate with all the other pictures waved in and then the bright yellow sun. I personally expect that I will never get my hands on this edition but I guess you never know maybe one will magically find its way to me. Then we also have your favorite recent cover by and for this I would go with Neverworld Wake by Marisha Pessel although I will admit before I bought it um, I had seen a lot of people really loved this and it is all about twisty time loops which is something that I really like so I was pretty confident that I would like it when I bought it but then when I saw it on special and it was so beautiful it was really it's beautifulness that like pushed me over that final hurdle to buy it. Another business person in the Animal Crossing world is Brewster so he runs the local cafe uh, and sometimes you can work for him and make coffee but it can be quite difficult because you have to remember which villagers like what kind of coffee, how much sugar they want, how much milk they want. It's a challenge but the prompt for this is your drink of choice while reading. <sighs> so generally I don't drink that much while I'm reading. I should because otherwise I get dehydrated but I just don't really like hot drinks so I also don't like water so we just go with dehydration. Also in Animal Crossing there is a museum where there are all sorts of dinosaur fossils, bugs and sea creatures on display and the animal that runs this museum is Blathers the Owl. So throughout the game you can make donations to him for items that are going to go into the museum but during the day you have to wake Blathers up because obviously he's an owl so he's only awake at night. So the prompt for this is to name a book that kept you up all night. So the book that first came to mind for this one was not this, uh, Seraphina's Flame by J.C. Hart. This is the first piece of that so it's an intergenerational story and each part is a different generation. Uh, initially I think she was going to release it as these short little novellas but instead then she bound them up uh, and I read the whole thing in ebook and I just stayed up all night reading it because I wanted to know what was going to happen next. Lastly another favorite in Animal Crossing is K.K. Slider. He is like a DJ musician. Um, he's very cool like super cool and there are a whole bunch of songs that he plays within the game. In New Leaf you normally go to the club to see him. I'm not sure where he will show up in New Horizons or where he comes in other games. But yeah he's just super cool. So we've got two prompts for KK Slider. Firstly we've got name a side character who became one of your favorites. Now for this it would definitely be Erin from Middle Game. So Middle Game is all about these alchemically created twins called Roger and Dodger. However there are some other alchemically created twins in this story as well and one of those twin pairs is Darren and Erin. Uh, and Erin became my favorite character. I don't think that you're particularly supposed to pay that much attention to her but I loved her and I'm just going to imagine forever that she got a happy ending. And the other KK Slider question is do you listen to anything while you read or if not how do you set the reading mood? I have to say like is silence a mood? Because silence is my mood for reading. I like silence. I just find any noise like takes me away from my focus on the book. Okay before we get into the villages we're going to talk briefly about a few random concepts in Animal Crossing. So firstly we've got the gyroids. Now it's not really clear are they alive? Are they not? I don't know but I always want to collect all of them. So for this the prompt is to name your favorite non-human character uh, and for this I would probably go with the Mbot from the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson or also Aiden from the Illuminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Basically any kind of broken AI systems. I just love them so much. Also the currency in Animal Crossing is bells. It's not really sure whether these are actually coins or actually bells. Probably coins. Normally you see them in 
bags. But the prompt for this is a book that's rich with character. For this I would go with Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor and also the sequel Muse of Nightmares. I just think the writing style in these books is very stylistic and unique to these books. The way everything just is described is just so beautiful and lush and the characters are also all very unique and well described. It's just such a beautiful fairy tale type story but with just so much more depth to it. So the next prompt in the tag that I got this from is I got stung by a bee, ow, ow, ow. So in New Leaf, and I'm sure it's the same in New Horizons, uh, it's possible to get stung by a bee uh, and then it makes your face kind of ugly. The villagers will say to you, well, you're looking a little bit ugly, are you okay? So the prompt for this is to name a bad book. Uh, and the first one that came to mind was Slam by Nick Hornby. I read it last year. It makes out that it's a story about this boy who talks to his Tony Hawk poster and then somehow learned something but that's not really what the story is about and also like the main problem in the book is something that hurts other people so much more than it hurts him and he never takes responsibility for things and I don't even feel like he learned very much in the book and the whole thing just made me really annoyed. Do not recommend. Uh, the next prompt is pitfall. So it's possible to get these pitfall seeds that you can bury in the ground. You can kind of see where they're buried although it is possible to kind of hide them uh, and if you or your villagers walk over the top of them you end up falling into the ground and you have to kind of struggle a bit in order to get out. You're always okay in the end but you know you've got to have a few troubles in these games. And the prompt for this is to name a book that you wouldn't mind never seeing again. <sighs> And the one that comes to mind is the one that I threw in the bin and I'm not even going to say its name but I threw it in the bin so you can tell that I never want to see it again because most books that I get rid of I would donate just so that somebody else could read them because somebody else might like them but this one no it's in the bin. So the last concept is fossil. So when you're digging things up, you're able to sometimes find these dinosaur fossils. I mentioned them briefly before when I said you could take them to Blathers in the museum. And for this, the prompt is your favorite history or historical fiction book. I don't really like historical fiction. Most of it that I've read, I think I haven't really liked as far as I can remember. However, uh, what I do like is alternate histories and one of those that I really liked would be Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon. So Wolf by Wolf is like this alternate history where the Nazis won the war uh, and we're following this girl who's able to shapeshift uh, who's entered a motorcycle race in order to kill Hitler. It's amazing. I really loved it. Okay so we're down to the last section and this is the villages section. So I looked it up and it said that there are about 460 villages that you can have living in your town, on your island, 460 in total. But I think normally you can only have 8 to 10 at a time. They can come and go although if they're one of your favorites uh, there are strategies to ensure that they stay because if you fall in love with a villager, you're never going to want them to leave. There are also eight different personality types and the personality type just kind of controls what kind of things the villager might say or talk about. So for this section as well as giving you a book for the prompt, I'm also going to tell you my favorite villager of that personality type. Firstly, we've got the peppy type. My favorite is definitely Sherry. She lived in my sister's town because you can go and visit each other's villages. And when I met Sherry, she suggested we could be best friends and we've been best friends ever since. And for this, the prompt is a character you'd feel peppy about them moving into your Animal Crossing town. After that, I've decided to go with Imogen from Invictus. So Imogen is the sister of the main character, I think. Did I make that up? So Imogen is just so light-hearted and fun. She dyes her hair different colors all the time. She has a red panda for a friend. She's so sweet and innocent even though she's in this like criminal time traveling gang. She's just wonderful and I would love for her to be my best friend. We also have the Uchi type. So this is like the big sister type. So my favorites in this type are the rock chicks. So Cherry and Phoebe, especially Phoebe. They're just like the perfect cool older sisters. And for this we want a book that has a sibling relationship you enjoy. Um, 
ideally a sister relationship. And I decided to go with Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake. So this is all about these three sisters with different witchy powers who are expected to fight to the death. But even though they haven't seen each other for 10 years, they do still have this sisterly relationship. And I really like how that sisterly relationship impacted the overall fight to the death. Next we have the cranky type. Uh, my favorite from the list, they said that Static the Squirrel was a cranky type. I don't really remember him being that cranky, but Static is just so cute. So even if he's cranky, I still love him. And for this, we want a book which made you cranky. Uh, and the one I thought of straight away would be Come Tumbling Down by Sean A. Maguire, the fifth book in the Wayward Children series. I was really hoping I would like it, but for certain reasons, it just made me kind of grumpy instead. Next we have the normal type and this was actually the hardest one to choose because so many of the normal ones are just so cute. So like next time you're worrying that maybe you're just a little bit too normal and not very interesting, don't worry because normal types are super cute apparently. And the question for this is what kind of books can you always turn to for comfort? Now as I said I don't really read so much for comfort, maybe for procrastination sometimes but not really for comfort more for me about just thinking about things in different ways. However, are you going to notice that change just behind me? Uh, a book that did recently comfort me was All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiebarter. So I guess a uh, type of books that I find comfort in is books that are just really strange and weird and just get me thinking about things in a really different way. Oh, did I say which one I picked? In the end I picked Sky the Wolf because she is just so cute. Then we have the snooty type. Now honestly these are probably my least favorite type but I do like Diana and for this it's a book that you enjoyed but nobody else seemed to. Uh, for that I went with not the Diabolic because quite a few people did like the Diabolic but the sequel The Empress made quite a lot of people quite mad especially what happens with the love interest but personally I liked the introduction of a time travel element. I also thought that what they did with the love interest was really interesting and I'm really interested to see what's going to happen in the third book which is coming out soon. Then we have the lazy type and my favorite is definitely Cube. I had him in one of my videos a little while ago. The lazy type are honestly my favorites. They just say the weirdest stuff. It's like they're just smoking weed all the time. They're paranoid. They want snacks all the time. They're just adorable. And for this the prompt is a book that took you way too long to read. Um, the best one I could think of was Dance of Dragons by George R. R. Martin. So Dance of Dragons pretty much took me six months to read and like pretty much ruined my whole year of reading the year that I read it. And that's why I'm not as excited for the next book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series just because I feel like it might end up destroying another year of reading. Then we have the smug type. My favorite smug type is definitely Marshall, another really adorable little squirrel. And for this it's a hyped book that you have zero interest in reading uh, and I think I'm gonna go with Crescent City or A House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. I just haven't really liked some of the more recent Sarah J Mass stuff, especially like her romance stuff is just so over the top and really just feel like a lot of stuff needs to be edited out uh, and since it's another really thick book not that interested in reading it even though I keep seeing people saying that they love it which makes me feel like I'm missing out but I just don't think it's gonna be for me. And lastly we have the jocks. So my favorite jock is Antonio although I'll always have a special place in my heart for Jay who was one of my very first villagers and for this is something that completes your reading experience. So your favorite snack bookmark, type of music. I actually didn't write any notes about how I was gonna answer this. Oh my chair just went down. We'll just do it from down here. Uh, so as I said I don't really remember to drink while I'm reading, I don't really like music or any noise, I don't like snacks really because you just end up getting crumbs in your book. But I guess one thing I do like is my bookmarks. So I have these bookmarks that you can like clip on the front of the book and then you have a ribbon that you put in the page. These are my favorite bookmarks because they're far superior to bookmarks that get lost. Should I try and be tall? I can almost do it. Oh that makes my abs so tight. Jocks would appreciate that. So that was a lot of book related, Animal Crossing related questions. So let me know if you have any interesting answers yourself. 
Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a really wonderful day, keeping yourself safe, and I will see you next time.